Hey guys, welcome to another video in the Free Sky series. And today I want to talk about this. Um, this is the FCS 150A. It is a smart port capable sensor um, that measures current. So they do have a few different variations. This particular one um, can do 100, 150 amps. So I use these for my big EDFs to measure current and also consumption. And we'll go ahead and go through the setup of that um, now. So the first thing is, is I'm using my Tandem um, XE radio. Um, this setup, of course, will be good for any of the Tandem series um, uh, radios, like the X18 or the X20 or this radio right here. So let's go ahead and start. So the first thing we need to do is install the sensor, okay? So what you'll need to do is the little hole right there on your ESC, you want to go ahead and connect it. So you'll you'll have to disconnect on this, you'll have to desolder that, run this through that hole onto the red wire of your ESC. The only thing is, is you do have to look at this arrow and that arrow should point towards your ESC. So in this particular case, it would be like that, okay? So once you have that, you solder it back together and the only other thing that you have to do is hook up the um, S port, okay? So you'll hook up the S port from here to your receiver and on a tandem TDR10, um, you'll have to use one of the channels and change it over from a channel to um, an S port, okay? There is a white connector on there that supposedly at some point um, you should be able to get a, a dedicated S port out um, on that white connector. Um, but unfortunately that's not implemented just yet. So hopefully in the future it will be, so you won't have to use up a channel. Good thing is there's 10 channels on that, on that receiver. So, you know, you, losing one usually is okay. All right. So, uh, let's go ahead and start. Okay. So you've got your, um, sensor, uh, hooked up to your ESC, power everything up. Um, I'm assuming that, uh, we'll assume that you're already bound and, and, um, got the radio set up. And let's go through it. So the first thing you need to do after you've got everything set up, okay, is you want to go into RF system, okay, and go down to where you bound that receiver. So that receiver is the TD-10R according to that. Hit set, okay. I have, um, you know, off um, off camera, I have my plane that has it set up right now. Um, and it's wired in, the, the uh, 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 sensor is wired in and set up, okay. So you go into that, you go into options, okay? And now, <clears throat> over here, what I did was I plugged in the S port into 10. So it would be channel 10, but notice how they label it pin 10. And the reason why that's labeled pin 10 is because this does not necessarily have to be channel 10. It can be anything that you want. So it could be a different channel, all the way to 24, or it could be smart port or S bus out or F bus. So in this case, we want that channel 10 or pin 10 to be a smart part, okay? Once that is set up, okay, that is now communicating with the sensor that you have. And the plane that I have uh, hooked up is my MB339, and I have a ton of sensors on it. So let's go ahead and check that out. Um, next thing you want to do is go to telemetry. And if you haven't gone to the screen yet, haven't set this up, it'll be like this. It'll be blank, okay? Um, the first thing you want to do is you want to discover sensors. And what this will do is this will um, um, find all the sensors. So if you added any sensors, like we just, for example, we were just gonna add the, the current sensor, it'll find it. So you wanna go ahead and turn that on, okay? And then um, you can turn it off again, but if you don't, it'll automatically turn off. But that's only, you only have that when you are discovering sensors. Okay, now on my list is all the sensors that are available, okay? All right, let's uh, go to the bottom of the list and look for current. There it is. Okay, so now the current sensor is that sensor that we just installed. Okay, if you want, you can go in here and edit and you can check your settings. Um, you can change the name if you want, no reason to. Um, for current, um, amperage is good. So the unit, you can make it if you want milliamps. Um, but for the any plane that's, you know, any decent size, you'll want amperage for this particular sensor. Okay, and everything else I think is okay. Let's just double check. Yep, everything is fine. Okay. Now notice over here you got a reset. Um, this is if you want to do a reset on that sensor, you can assign a switch to it. Um, you can do that, but I'll show you a better way to do it for all your telemetry. Okay, so let's get out of that. 
I'm just returning out to the to the main menu um, in models. And the next thing we're going to have to do, let's go up one more, is we got to do something with that sensor. So now that we have the sensor installed, um, the radio recognizes it and sees it. We got to do something with it. So over here is your display. If you want, you can add something like, you know, like this one right now I'm not using, maybe timer three I'm not using, I could put it there. But I'm going to go ahead and make a telemetry page for this plane, okay? So over here is display, which is the same as that one over there, but I'll go ahead and hit this, okay? Now, right now I only have one screen, okay? That plus symbol over there, if I hit that, now I can add a new screen, okay? So let's just use, I don't know, say this one over here, okay? So now I've got six boxes that I can go ahead and put any sort of information I want. And in this particular case, I'm going to go ahead and put telemetry information there. Okay. So let's go to the first one and go change widget. We want a value. Okay. And then um, the drop down box over there, let's go ahead and choose telemetry. And obviously we're going to do current. There it is. Okay. Now, if we take a look at that, okay, so this is my first screen and that, that new one that we just added, that new screen, we can swipe across or we can hit this button over here. This time we'll swipe across. And that is the current current that is right now. That is real-time current information. Um, so that's not really useful because this, this is a display and I'm never going to look at, down at that during a flight. So the best would be if this was maximum current, okay? So let's go ahead and go back to display. Okay, highlight the drop down over there where has which it has current. Okay, and now hit and hold down. When you hit and hold down, you have options. And now the option that I want is max. Okay, now it's going to tell me only the maximum number that it read. Okay, so that's the first thing that we can do. The next thing we can do is we can make it audible so that we can hear it. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I'm going to go back into model. I'm going to uh, swipe across to special functions. And in special functions, I'm going to go ahead and add a special function. And the action that I want is play value. Okay. Let's enable it so it happens. Okay. So the active condition be when I hit this switch over here. So let's go over ahead and go to that over here and choose this switch. Okay. And the arrow is pointed down. In other words, the switch is engaged. That's what I want. Okay. So now Let's turn the volume up a bit. Okay. Now when I hit it, you notice that it highlights. So that's telling you that that's working. Okay. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to choose what I want it to play. So the, the action is play value. The value that I want it to play is current. So we go over here and then we go to telemetry. Go to the next one and choose current. There it is. Okay once off and that is it so now if i trigger the switch zero amps it tells you how many amps um it is at that exact time okay so same thing on this one if i wanted to i can make that in like um um real time so that as i hit it that's the actual amperage but i think on this i want the same thing i'd want it to tell me the maximum value okay so on that value it's the same thing as the last one hit and hold down here and choose max Return to get out of it, and zero point two amps. There you go. Okay, so we've got our current um, display that tells me maximum. I've got a switch zero point that tells me amps. what it is uh, maximum, and let's go ahead and now let's do consumption. So consumption is how much, how many milliamps or amps the battery has pulled up to that point. Okay, so let's go ahead and set that one up. Let's go to model, swipe across, go to tel um, telemetry, okay? Now, we're using the same sensor, right? We're using a current sensor, but the only thing the current sensor does is display how many amps there is right now. So what I want to do is I want to create at the top a calculated sensor, okay? So the calculated sensor, okay? Um, is a formula based on uh, a telemetry um, item. So in this case, consumption is correct, but there's a couple of other ones over there too. So for example, like here, like distance of a GPS, we can actually see how, 
how you know how far the the, the plane has traveled but consumption is correct for what we're doing okay you can name it units is milliamps i think milliamps is fine for this okay and if you want decimal places um, you wouldn't need that for milliamps you'd probably want that if you're doing amps okay and write logs i'm just double checking everything okay reset again if we want to reset that sensor but we'll do it in a different way but source is the one that we care about now it's going to take the source as current so the current sensor will get calculated to make a consumption sensor okay all right so now it added that at the bottom of the list we now have um, a consumption um, 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 sensor now let's go ahead and add that okay so same thing in display let's go to the second one <clears throat> there we'll make it a value and telemetry and now we have consumption there it is okay so let's go out so we can see it and there it is okay so now it's gonna keep adding the um, the amperage um, and tell you how much you've consumed um, if you've got a 6,000 milliamp battery and you're at 5,500 you know that you're just about to crash so don't try not to get there um, okay so now that we have that let's do the same thing let's go ahead and add a switch so let's maybe choose this one and when I hit that switch it'll tell me what the consumption how many milliamps there is okay so it's the same process as this let's go into model go across to special functions let's add a special function add play value okay enable it active condition is when I hit this switch okay and what value do I want telemetry and consumption okay so if I hit this switch it'll tell me zero point two amps how much current is being drawn at that one at uh, at maximum and this one will tell me zero milliamp hours how many milliamps I've drawn okay um, now one thing that you can do is you can set it up so this is all manual you can actually look down the screen see what your current draw is uh, or you can hit a button and it'll tell you but with consumption why don't we set up a warning okay and the warning is at once it gets to a certain so let's just say we're running a 6,000 milliamp battery and maybe at four I don't know maybe 4,000 milliamps it warns me and says hey you're at 4,000 milliamps okay so to set that up okay right now we're in special functions we want to do a logical switch and if you guys haven't played with the logical switches before they're pretty damn cool um, they're essentially you think of it as a switch like like a physical switch but instead of flipping the switch what flips the switch is a certain action or a certain thing that happens okay and if it, it'll flip that logical switch that virtual switch so this is a logical switch let's add one okay and now let's name it so that way like you know if we have more logical switches we don't get um you know confused so this one is going to be i can't spell okay consumption warning okay and what is the function so what do I want it to do so I'm gonna do a function of a is greater than X okay and what that means is source a okay we're gonna go ahead and go to telemetry and go to consumption so when consumption is greater than value 4,000 milliamps okay there it goes so when consumption is greater than 4,000 uh, milliamps then turn on that switch okay so active condition okay uh, in this particular case I do want to uh, change that okay mm, yeah let's use this one over here okay so active condition in other words this switch has to be up in order for that um, um, switch to be triggered okay so what that will mean is 
if the warning is happening and it's starting to get annoying, and I know it is, I can flip that switch and uh, it'll stop warning, okay? All right, so that is a logical switch. Now you gotta use that switch to trigger a special function. Okay, so let's go to special function. Let's add a special function, okay? And I wanna play value, enable it, active condition, eh. Um, let's go ahead and change this to be a logical switch. Okay, which logical switch? Well, I only have one, so it's only gonna do one, which is consumption warning. Okay, so in other words, the what needs to be active in order for this play value to happen is that logical switch that we had, which um, turns on after 4,000 milliamps. So what value do I want it to play? And the value that I want it to play, telemetry, consumption, okay? All right, and repeat. Let's repeat once every eight seconds. Okay, I'll turn that down so the beeping stops. Okay. All right, that is it. So now we have a current um, uh, maximum over here, display. We have a consumption display. We have two buttons. Turn on the volume. Zero point two amps. Zero milliamp hours. Okay, that'll tell me the current and also tell me how much I've consumed up to that point. And we have a warning set up and the warning will um, trigger um, once uh, anything, it's over 4,000 milliamps and then it'll just continue every eight seconds to repeat how many milliamps there is. Um, and if I wanted to, I can turn that warning off. Okay, so if you set up telemetry, uh, I do think it's important to set up a reset. Okay, so the reset will reset all telemetry um, and just start from scratch. So just before flight, I like to do a reset and it'll reset all, all the values. Uh, very important for GPS, especially if you care about altitude, um, because it resets um, and does the offset, the automatic offset. And what that offset is on GPS, for example, is um, whatever, wherever you are at the ground, it'll make that zero instead of um, at sea level. So if you're a thousand feet above sea level, it won't read a thousand feet, it'll read zero on the ground. Okay, so you do want to set up a reset. Now, I showed you before, you can go into model, telemetry, go to a sensor, let's say that sensor doesn't really matter which, in this case, it's just an example. And at the bottom, there's always a reset and you can assign that to a switch. Now you can do that for every single telemetry sensor. What I do prefer to do is do it as a special function. Okay, so let's add a special function. Reset, it's the first one. State enable, uh, pick a switch, any switch. So, I don't know, that one. Okay, and what do I want to reset? And notice how you have the thing of whole telemetry. So in other words, every single telemetry thing, that's what I want, okay? That makes it easier, instead of programming a whole bunch of them, you can just program one and be done with it, okay? So I also like to use that same switch, whatever switch I decide to, to reset the timer. So when I hit that um, before a flight, I'll hit that and it'll reset my telemetry and it'll also reset my timers. So that's just another special function, uh, reset and choose timers, okay? But that's pretty much it. So if you take a look over here, there it goes, it resets it. So um, that's it, we set up um, displays, we just set up some um, audible callouts. Zero milliamp hours, zero. Amps. And we set up a warning, and the warning will tell you when um, you're over 4,000 milliamps, and it'll just keep telling you what the uh, uh, the consumption is after that point. And then we also set up a switch to turn off that warning if it gets annoying. Okay? And that is it. Um, I think that's everything. If you guys have any questions, um, uh, feel free to leave a comment, um, like and subscribe, etc., etc. Thank you very much, guys, and have a good day.